sounded funny. Hello, friends. I'll be with you in just a second. So there, that's the the end of my oil palette. This is a replacement video for one I did a couple days ago, which I have now edited, which I've now deleted. Um, because my microphone died halfway through that broadcast. So here we go. This is Daily Art Adventure number 804, take two. You don't see that very often. Tour of my oil palette, take two. Whoa, got some noise need to turn down here. There we go. <laughs> All right, so real quickly, um, the, the reason I was inclined to do this the other day is because I don't always have all the colors that I like on my palette. And in this case, I do. So here we go. First of all, overview. This section from here to here is prism, prismatic rainbow order. It's a circle. This is a bluish purple, and this is a purplish blue. So if, it, if I put them in a circle, this is the next one. Does that make sense? You do not, of course, need to do your palette anything like mine, but there are people out there who are curious. And then I do my browns after the rainbow, after the prismatic order, I do my browns from light to dark. So as you can see, I have three <laughs> colors here. I'll start here. This is Naples yellow, but it's not a yellow. These are yellow. That's a brown. It just happens to be called Naples yellow. Likewise, this is yellow ochre. It's yellowish, but it's a yellowish brown or brownish yellow, whichever you prefer. And we're not done with the crazy names. This is oxide red, but clearly it's not red, it's a reddish brown. So, okay, if you're a beginner, get used to that. Indian red, uh, red, uh, there's a number of things that are called red that aren't red. I just gave you two yellows that aren't yellow. So those are browns. Naples, ochre, uh, oxide red, and I'll finish brown. This is a student grade raw umber which I have on my palette because it's my favorite color for knocking down chroma. That is to say, when a color is too intense, I've, I'm mixing it on my palette, and I've got exactly what I want, except that it's too intense. Then I add some, often some raw umber to it. And in most cases, for most brands, the raw umber is actually darker than the burnt umber, which you would think it's the other way around, but normally with most manufacturers, raw umber is darker. All right, let's start with the, the colors. Real simple, dioxazine violet, period, simple enough. Permanent rose, my favorite red color because it's very transparent. Permanent rose, and then naphthol crimson, not every manufacturer manufactures naphthol crimson. You might need to look around a little bit to find it. Then Scarlet Lake, and as I understand it, the word lake means transparent, um, but I just like it because it's a warm red. So this is a cool red, very cool, medium cool, and warm red. And if you're confused about how a red can be cool, then listen to, listen to one of my other videos. I'm not going to get into it here. Then any kind of orange. Now, I don't have any cads or cobalts. No cobalt blue, no cad, yellow, orange, or red. If you avoid cadmiums, orange is the, the, the hardest color to replace. Now, you can, you can do, um, I'm rifling through one of, one of my many buckets of paint to find out which orange this, oh, I can't tell you what orange it is. I can tell you what orange I have here. Oh, this is Williamsburg permanent orange. Ignore that. It's a fine color, but that's not that's not what is on there. Anyway, any kind of orange. Um, and I saw it the other day. I can almost remember it, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not pyrrole orange. Might be pyrrole. And then my favorite yellow by far, Indian yellow, because it's transparent. It looks very dark or even brownish here on on this palette 
but trust me when you add white to it or when you tr make it transparent as with a medium it's a very intense yellow but there are times when I want a very light so this is this could be CAD yellow medium let me go back real quickly I don't use any imitation or hues like CAD red hue uh, more than once in a, in a painting class I've been able to spot a hue from across the room because it doesn't look good I know that sounds crazy but it has happened more than once in an art class so I find that I can get all the reds I need with these two really Scarlet Lake and Naphthol Crimson with these three added uh, Scarlet uh, Permanent Rose um, so, but 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 I don't think anybody can tell the difference between a CAD yellow and a CAD yellow imitation so here's the one exception where you can use CAD hue or CAD imitation is with the light yellow uh, that's not what that is but it doesn't matter what it is <laughs> any light yellow that's not that's not cadmium is fine with me now the greens I'm very funny about greens in that excuse the mildly crude expression but I don't give a flip and rip about green at all I don't care whatever whatever green you want to get or no green fine with me I don't care about green and as I, I said the other day maybe as I mature as a painter as I get better maybe I will come to care but I'm 40 years into it and I don't care because I don't use I hardly ever use any green plain or straight and you can make all the most beautiful greens you want with just these blues and these these yellows so any red any green that tickles you now I do happen to know that chromium oxide green which is a pretty quite a dull color um, is kind of a fast growing fast drying <laughs> fast growing <laughs> listen to me <laughs> I've got green on the brain it's a fast fairly fast drying and very opaque uh, color chromium oxide green so if that matters to you go for it doesn't matter to me but I have two blues no no cad no cobalt blue thalo blue not student grade on some of these you can cheat and get away with student grade generally you don't want to but really avoid student grade in the uh, in the um, thalo blue category then finally ultramarine deep don't in my opinion don't ever buy I don't know why they make cobalt I'm sorry I don't know why they make ultramarine blue light it's a waste of money if you want your if you want your ultramarine blue to be light add some white to it or add some medium to it so that's just one of those I, I just don't get it that's a complete waste of money in my opinion so always buy ultramarine blue deep if it's not labeled deep or like it is deep all right so it's only a few manufacturers make it ultramarine blue light and then I already told you about the the browns Naples Naples yellow yellow ochre oxide red and um, student grade raw umber why student grade because the pigment count is low and I'm almost always just using this to knock down color and I like it to be a, a blunt tool I don't like it to be high pigment count so I have to be very very careful about how much I pick does that make sense you don't have to be like me that's that's what I do that's weird all right and then white you'll notice that I always put up my titanium whites in separate piles don't put one great big pile of titanium white because you're gonna either with a palette knife or if you're like me you mix with brushes I never almost never mix with a palette knife I mix with brushes and uh, if I have red in my brush and I stick my red brush into this pile I'm going to contaminate that pile with red paint right if I've got one big pile then I've contaminated the whole pile so to speak with red so I you know I'm gonna contaminate this one with red this one with green this one with blue this one with brown and so forth so it keeps them separate and finally the medium that I use almost all the time is liquid let me show you that bottle again so liquid and one more word about the titanium about the titanium white as you probably remember I almost always use an alkyd which means a fast dry titanium because normal titanium is a very slow drying and if you're going to do any impasto at all in a painting um, it's going to be one of your later colors which means it's going to be light which means it's going to be titanium and if you put a slab for instance way up here on this painting 
um, you know, I've got some impasto up here. And, and if I used a regular titanium for this, you know, it's a 64th of an inch thick. <laughs> um, that, that could take six weeks to dry. That could take a month to dry anyway. Okay, so that's why I use uh, alkyd titanium white. Right, so that's, I think, all I need to tell you about. Um, is there anything else? Oh, somebody will say what brands. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Experiment. Every once in a while, I find a brand and a color, a particular color in a particular brand that I like. But most of the time, I tell people, no, experiment. Try. Try all different kinds of things. Um, you'll find out what you do like and what you don't like. I do know that this is a Charvan um, oxide red. I like that. and like Charvan's. Charvin for you Americans, uh, uh, ultramarine blue deep, um, but no, other than that, I really have almost no uh, preference for brands whatsoever. Experiment, try, try different things. Generally speaking, you want to avoid student grades, um, but not always, as you see, because I like a student grade raw umber. All right, I think that's all I'm going to say. Hello to Jane, hello to Jody, hello to Lady Grammy again, and Monique. And Crusock, light blue, better camera. Wow, something wrong with my camera. Well, that would be distressing. This is my new camera. <laughs> I don't know why. If you want to leave a comment and tell me what was wrong with my camera, I'd like to know. I'm using a Mevo Plus, brand new, two weeks ago been using a Mevo for the last three years and now I'm using a Mevo Plus and it is working much better. So let me know what's wrong with it. It might be slow internet speed. Well, we are having slow internet today, but that's not my the fault of my camera. All right, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks y'all for watching. Talk to you again soon, I hope. Bye-bye.